Hi, how you doing? My name is Steve Houston, and this is... Angela. That was not enthusiastic. Anyway, it is Sunday, which means Sunday's our random day. Remember, on Wednesdays we do an agent training series, and on Sunday it's a kind of a random thing, and we discuss, or I discuss, what's uh, most important. Uh, question I've got throughout the course of the week. Remember, on this channel, we discuss the facts. We talk about IMOs, financial services, mortgage section, final expense, really all things financial services. We talk about the IMOs, the comp plans, all those things. We provide third-party documentation, and we discuss it on the video. We allow you to decide what's best for you. Welcome to the channel this week. It is Sunday, and I have Angela here with me. And believe it or not, most of the people that I talk to on the phone through the course of the week say, when is Angela going to do another video? Well, here she is. I didn't is. realize I was so popular. <laughs> very popular for somebody that never shows up very often. Maybe it's a secret, like a, like a cameo yeah, a appearance. Secret. Is that what they call exactly. it? Is that what they call cameo appearance? That's why everybody. That's why everybody, you know, drives around Hollywood trying to scope out the celebrities, you know, because you never see them. Mm. It's like a rarity. Well, it is a rarity that you're on this Moving channel. Along. That's for sure, because I beg, plead, and, and do whatever it takes <laughs> to get you to do a video. But I have her here today. And we're going to do. We're going to try to keep this. Uh, within my eight to 10 minute time frame, and I already don't know how long we've been talking. I know. But uh, I have a series of questions here that I want to ask you. Okay. And uh, we're gonna let you just kind of unload on people, all right? All right. So, uh, listen, um, I kind of thought since most people, really, uh, there are some people out there that watch these, these videos that are in the business or in the industry, mm -hmm. they're stuck and struggling, right? Um, and they're not getting any support from that so-called and bad word we call upline uh, in those other IMOs that do the network marketing type concept, and they can't leave because they have this uh, rule that they are stuck. Basically, they're hand-tied. Uh, that's a different segment, but I think you can help them as well uh, in this video. Also, the, there's, a, there's another larger segment of people that are kicking around. They're considering the industry, um, and they don't, you know, they're looking at all the, watching all the videos, and we know that the, the internet, unfortunately, can be a cesspool of, of bad information or complaints or whatever it is, not necessarily true facts. That's right? true. We agree with that? Cesspool, we I like that word. We agree that the internet can be a cesspool. <laughs> right, so, um, we're on the internet too, by the way, yeah. but we're not the cesspool kind of people. We're right? on the other part of the internet. Yeah. So, um, in that spirit, I okay. thought I'd, I have four or five questions here that I think you can probably answer in detail and help, help, help both segments out. If you're stuck right now, can't go somewhere and need help, that's what this channel is all about. I mean, we talk about a lot of training concepts that you're probably not getting from, from wherever you're at, and we're always open to discuss uh, even more stuff. I've been doing this for 30 plus years anyway, um, and we, we can help a lot of people, but again, the industry's on fire. There's a phenomenal amount of opportunity out there, and um, we want to help those people too. So, uh, in that spirit, with that in mind, my first question, I feel like, what's that thing where they ask like those Jeopardy. questions? Jeopardy. Oh, okay. So, question number one, yeah. uh, good for 200 points. <laughs> I don't know what the points by uh, Is, what do you consider, and again, Angela talks, just so I can preface this up, because it is an honor to have you here, because, I mean, Angela talks to, a hundred, hundred, well, probably off and on a hundred people a week, uh, all throughout, you know, with the, the, uh, senior underwriters with most of the carriers that we deal with. She has a relationship there, a close relationship, but they know her name. Oh, not you again, Angela. Uh, but also talking to agents and, and helping them with getting started in the business and, you know, from product selection to phone scripts to making dials. So she has, I mean, this is her area. That's why I think it would help. So I've already probably burned off three minutes. The most important, what, what is the most important thing to consider when uh, you're thinking about this business uh, as maybe a prospective agent? That's a good question. So, you know, I, Steve and I, and I have come, you know, we have lots of years of experience of, Steve has a lot of experience in the insurance business, and I have kind of a lot of experience in kind of pulling your boots, pulling yourself up from your bootstraps not just in this industry, but in other industries and other businesses that we've been involved in. And when I hear a question like that, the first thing that I think about is, what do I need, what do I need inside myself in order to do this? So taking that out of it, um, 
and looking at it from just a pragmatic side, from a business side, you know, what do you what do you really need to be looking for? What are the most important things to be looking for? What are the red flags? And I think that because you've looked at so many different IMOs, you've looked at so many different quasi IMOs, you looked at so many different structures. All the comp plans. All the different comp plans. The promotion and guidelines. The guidelines and you've met agents and and from all from all of them. Been a psychiatrist to many of them. To many. Yeah. I think that some of the most important, there are certain things that you're going to find across the board with all of them. Okay. So you can't get yourself hung up on, well, a, one particular product pays better than another product at this company or that company, or I can get 5% here or 5% there, or, um, you know, this company has, you know, eight gazillion leads in their system and this company has 8,000 leads in their system. Um, so there are certain things that I think you're kind of weighing six of one half. Of Higher contract, other. lower contract, lower contract. high contract, no no support, no, support, no training at all. Low contract, poor leads, free leads, whatever. I get it. There's all so, those things, and, right. and, and, and that's why I'm asking this question because all of those things. I think you're right. I think I think that there's there's more important things besides those right. things, and they throw those out more of a carrot. Right. It's like dangling and, the carrot. You know, I think that you have to look at. You know, when we looked at this business, one of the things, and, and a, a shift that we made in the past, you know, once we had kind of wised up a little bit, I think that you have to look at, um, one, do they have some sort of support for you if you want to focus on sales, if you want to focus on what we call your, you know, your own pen. So if you're going to go out and you're going to run appointments, which everybody should, but if that really is your focus, then I think you have to look for, you know, does this company seem to have... Um, at least some sort of lead support. If you, if you are going to go with a company that has, um, you know, a leads system, you know, do they have a decent lead system? Are there at least, you know, do I feel comfortable that there's going to be some sort of lead flow in my area? Can I have access to that? You know, and please don't send us messages about how expensive leads are because, you know, you have so little cost when you are involved in this business that you have to pay for a natural resource. So that's a good um, point. That's the, I'm, it's a mindset issue. That's a mindset issue. Yeah. And because um, all businesses have hard costs all advertising, have hard rent, costs. electric, telephone, whatever. Right. Yeah. And, Insurance. Um, you have to have a bigger, you we have, have none think, of that. You have to think bigger than that. Yeah. Okay. So, so don't call me about lead costs. But do they have some sort of a lead system? The second thing that's a warning to me for companies that, you know, that Steve has looked at is, um, are there are there too many like weird things? And I know that sounds like a that sounds like a weird thing to evaluate. But you know, if you go to work for a company and you have to give your first ten sales to the person who hired you, that's weird. Or if your number you one producing to, leg. Right, or if you have to build a leg to a certain point, and once you have that leg producing, you know, 20 agents or $10,000 a month, I'm making this up, uh, then you have to give that leg, you have to surrender that leg or sign that leg over to your upline. Or, That's weird. Or you have to make a list of 200 people, if the manager pay, runs those, those appointments with you, and you have to give him that business right. or split the commission with him. It should be... When you're evaluating the normalcy of an IMO, I think that you have to look for things that aren't that aren't just aren't aren't funky weird like that. And if I have to make a list of my warm market, and then you're going to go out with me and help me sell my warm market, and I'm going to sit in front of my family and have you there, and you're going to do that, you know, and we're going to have this kind of triangular sales thing going on, and my family thinks they're helping me. But you're getting all the commission. All that's of it, weird. or half of it, or half of and it, and I'm still getting the override from that production. So I'm right. making more money than you are. Then that to me is weird. Yeah. So I think you have to evaluate. Or a criminal. The company <laughs> or criminal, whatever. <laughs> Do you, I think you have to evaluate? So one, I think you have to evaluate. You know, is there some sort of a lead system if you're gonna if you want that? You have to evaluate. Is there anything weird? And I know that's really vague, but again, there are some things, and that's why I think you people gravitate towards you and their conversations with you and this channel. Because we kind of help or hope to help you navigate through the weird. You know, hey guys, that's weird. You shouldn't do that. That's weird. And then I think that the third thing that is, in my opinion, um, very important is having some sort of other support. Like have you, um, you know, are you, are you pairing up with or are you signing up with somebody within that company? Are you being hired by somebody in that company that is going to be there to give you some sort of support? 
as well as is is there some sort of support from the company itself because we've seen the whole gamut we've seen some companies that once you're hired they don't have any support for you at all yeah. and then we've also seen the flip side of that is, and that is is that you have some companies that are not just there to support you but they seem to have their nose in every little tiny thing that's going on and well, why are you doing this and why are you doing that and why did you sign this and why did you sign that so you want a median i think in terms of the kind of support that you are from going to get and that from support has to come from somebody that knows what they're doing right i mean it's, this is a do as i do business not do as i say right. business and i talk about that a lot but so you want someone that's going to provide you support but more than the support they had to they had to have done it they had to right. they had to be putting the uniform on and going and selling policies yeah. too uh, not just these recruiter types that have never sold anything I mean, I, so I mean, my, my point is, it's not just when you say support. I'm I'm thinking mental support, and it's not mental support. They had to know no. what to do, that what what you should what you should be doing, and how right. to get the sale. That's right. Not just you know encouragement, encouragement. Right. <laughs> What's that movie? Encouragement. I can't think. Of a couples movie. Whatever. Yeah. Go and move on. Couples retreat. Yeah, a couple anyway. retreat. Go watch um, it. <laughs> and then I think that the fifth thing, which is the last thing on my list of things that you should really be looking for, is uh, you. You know, you really, I think you really have to have um, a come to Jesus meeting with yourself about are you ready and willing to do the work that's necessary and are you willing to push through some of the stuff that's going to be difficult because, you know, I don't, I don't know of anything that you can do on this planet from cooking a meal to uh, building a house to starting a business to getting a job to, you know, d dealing with life. All things have difficulty. And, you know, somebody once said, uh, you know, you've heard the saying, you know, it's, oh, that's easier said than done. Everything is easier to say than to do. But that doesn't negate the fact that you still have to do them. And um, I think that... And that, you're going to be bad before you're good. And you're going to be bad before you're good. And you're not going to go out and... So and they have you, driver's ed training. You know, you're not going to get a car and drive like, a, right. like you've been driving for 20 years. That's I right. mean, some people want, want to get in this business. They want to make four or five dials and go, you know, and, and quit because they're not good enough. Well, you're not going to be good enough. You're just you're learning a new skill. Right. You weren't good after driving the car four or five times no. either. I mean, I had a girlfriend in college who was actually my roommate who took her driving test, and when she pulled out of the parking lot of the DMV, she went the wrong way on the on the road. Right. So it was the shortest driving test. She lives in your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> it was the shortest driving test in like the history of the state of California. However. Um, a week later, she went back and took it again. I don't remember. I don't think she passed the second time. But the third time, she went back, she tried it again. She passed. Um, had she not passed, she'd be a... Well, I'm not going to tell you how old she is now, because then you know how old I am. Had she, we, she would be a middle-aged woman now without a driver's license, right? And that's not going to work. So I just think that you have to, like I said, you have to have that real serious conversation with yourself don't you, you know i'm not going to get distracted by lots of shiny objects i'm not going to get pulled off course i'm going to follow the system that's in front of me and i'm going to get i'm going to get better all the time because you're not going to start out good i'm sure we've already blown past our eight minutes yeah whatever. and we've got four more questions okay okay go. okay I'll, so we got a rapid fast. fire to say okay rapid fire okay, rapid fire. okay so that's the first couple of questions no stop okay so we got through i think three questions okay we've blown past the eight minutes so what we're going to do is we're going to stop here, pick this up on part two. So go find part two, and we'll continue it on over there. Good luck. Go find it. All right. Go so on. part go one on. is not is ending, and part two is over there. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you on part two.